All right, now for number three, let's go ahead and move on to a, a pretty recent one that I just found not too long ago. Um, I haven't used it a ton, but I do use it. It's called Flight Plan Database. And again, this will be in the description for you guys to find yourself. Uh, there's two different ways you can do it. It's very simple. You could either search uh, a flight plan that's already been created before uh, between the two airports that you would like to fly to and from, or you can make a quick plan uh, and it'll g generate a flight plan for you. So uh, we could try both. I mean, it's very, it's very you know, self-explanatory. Uh, KIAH to KLAX, exact same flight plan we're going to do before. We hit search. You can also search it by tags if you would like. Now it'll show you a bunch of different flight plans that other people have flown that have already, they've generated before in the past. And you can download those flight plans if you like. You can click on them to find out what they have. Um, pretty pretty simple. Actually, you can see right here that I, I typed, <laughs> that I searched it before in the past too. So we're actually going to go back and I'm going to show you the quick plan generator. So we're going to type the exact same thing, K-I-A-H to K-L-A-X. Um, there's actually an advanced option. I'm not sure what that all entails, but uh, we're not going to worry about that for this basic tutorial. And then we're going to hit fly. That's going to generate for a few seconds. Give it a second. And now it's going to show up. And now on the top of your screen, you see the details of your flight from to uh, flight number if you want to have a flight number. Uh, it shows you your distance on your right side of the screen, your max altitude. Um, also shows it in meters. It shows you how many waypoints are going to be giving you. And then below that, you actually see where well, you can actually download this for multiple types of flight simulators. Uh, you have X-Plane 8 through 10, 11 that's coming soon, FSX, uh, Flight Gear, PMDG, Air, all kind of stuff down here. Um, you don't really need this for infinite flight, but if you like to use this for another simulator, the option is there. Now down here in the notes, this is actually really cool. It gives you an ascent rate. It gives you ascent speed, cruise altitude speed, cruise speed. Descent rate, descent speed, like a lot of really cool stuff. Um, I didn't see anywhere where it gives you like a top of descent or tell you where you should start descending, or maybe I just didn't look hard enough. But um, we're not gonna worry about the stuff below that, the options. Um, down below here, now you get, actually get to see right at the top of your screen, actually right now, you see route, and then you're gonna see the route they're giving you, all right? Now this route does not include any departures or arrivals. You can see if you look in there, but it has a lot of uh, airways. So you see this J86, that's an airway. Remember, it has a letter before uh, before a number. That's another airway, J2, another airway. So these are all things that Infinite Flight will not recognize. Now, if you uh, copy this as is, if you copy this as is, uh, it'll still work. It just, it'll, it'll, Infinite Flight will automatically delete the airways. So, I mean, you can leave them in there, but it's just Infinite Flight's gonna get rid of them anyway, so might as well take them out early. So below that, you see a map of your whole flight plan. You can see all your, air, I mean, your, all your, your waypoints and everything like that, which gives you a visual, really cool visual. In the top right of that, you can actually see uh, precipitation, winds, information, a lot of really cool uh, stuff that you can see. Um, it's very helpful. At the bottom of that, it gives you a very highly detailed um, uh, kind of like list of, of how you know your flight's going to go with all the fixes, all the VORs, all that stuff right there. So that's a lot of information for you here. It also has your altitude profile right here, which is pretty cool. It kind of shows you how your altitude will look as you fly. It also even gives you the terrain. So as you see, um, and this is pretty accurate. As you fly out of Texas, it's very, very flat in Texas, but the terrain raises and you get uh, above sea level. And then you get to a lot of mountains out here, up in um, Phoenix, Arizona, Arizona area. And then it kind of comes back down around uh, Nevada. I don't, I, I think around, I'm not sure where it comes down, but then you have a lot more mountains come out in Southern California. So it's pretty accurate. That's pretty cool. Uh, we scroll down, we're going to skip that little weather section. Right here, it also shows you the METAR information for each airport. So we have KIAH, Houston, uh, George Bush. It gives you location, elevation, which is very helpful information right here. Uh, runways, it has five runways, magnetic variation, I mean, time zone, everything, everything you need. Uh, METAR right here, I don't know how updated this, meet, meet, actually this METAR is, um, it's actually pretty recent, 1900, so it's pretty it's pretty recent. So um, it's pretty good, a lot of really good information. It also gives it, gives it to you for LAX. Destination, runways, it gives you all the runway information. I mean, it gives you everything. It also gives you a popular alternative. So basically, it shows you earlier we, start, we searched the, you know, other people's routes. Now, this is actually where the other people's routes show. So we generated our own, but it actually shows you other people who have flown this exact same route and the variations that they have chosen. So um, if you don't like the route that they gave you, you can choose a different one. And uh, again, you can just copy uh, this same flight plan right here with uh, your departure uh your departure airport code in the front and your arrival airport code in the back and copy that straight to infinite flight and boom like i said this all works on your phone also uh, if you're not using a, a extra computer or device or things like that so that is the third way 
that I uh, create my flight plans. And one of the most recent ways is that I started making my flight plans. So let's move on to number four. Um, this is also a very recent, another very recent flight planner that I just started using. It's actually called onlineflightplanner.org. It's very easy. I mean, it's it's actually very, very helpful. Um, a lot of people may even, uh, you know, want to do this one instead. All right, so basically what you do is, um, and let's see, yeah. Basically what you do, you go down here. You don't have, an, have to have an account or anything. You just scroll down to route section. Uh, you can choose your desired format. If you'd like to have a format, you can see your last flight plan. I've already created one before this video, testing it out. But uh, I'm going to create another one from scratch just to show you guys. So you can, you know, hit check marks in whichever type of way you would like to have it. If you want it in a text format or whatever. So we're going to go down here to departure. I'm going to type in PIH tab. See that already clicks on our web, or shows up our destination, I mean our departure. Hit KL, KLAX. And then, um... The Eric cycle, that's, um, that's just, you don't worry about that. That's just basically saying how updated the navigation data is going to be on it. Um, you can choose your range of where you want your minimum to your maximum altitude to be. So, uh, for example, for a flight about that long, I'll, you know, I'll say about 320 to 360, maybe even 380. And then uh, level, I'm not sure what that means. To be honest with you, you can choose your aircraft. So, I mean, you can fly. I know for this route, they fly 737. 800 a lot, which we saw in the flight in flightware earlier. So we can try that. We'll do 77 800. Um, I'm in America, so I use pounds and not kilograms. Um, you can decide whether you want SIDS and stars. Now, for infinite flight, you do not need SIDS or stars. You can uh, you can uncheck both of those. Um, RNAV equipped. Don't know. Don't rem don't worry about that. Something you don't have to worry about infinite flight. Don't worry about country codes or anything like that. Basically, all you need to do is this first row, and you're good. Hit create flight plan, and then wait a couple seconds. And here it is. Uh, so basically, it does the same thing a lot of the other sites do. It gives you all your waypoints again. Uh, we're seeing a lot of the same waypoints because we're generating the same flight plan, which makes sense because you should kind of see a very similar uh, flight plans in, in either way. I'm seeing a few extra points here and there, um, but it basically takes you the exact same route. It takes you about the exact same amount of time. So as you can see, first column has all your IDs for all your different waypoints and uh, intersections and things like that. Uh, VORs. It has a frequency if it is a VOR. Um, it has the track. This is the uh, heading that you'll fly from this waypoint or to this waypoint. It has your distance uh, between each waypoint. It has your GPS coordinates, and then it has your actual name, full name for all the different waypoints. There's a lot of very helpful information. Sometimes you can't find a, um, a waypoint in Infinite Flight, and it's good to search the, uh, the actual full name of it sometimes. So it works for me. Uh, so as we can see, we have 21 fixes, uh, 1,206 nautical miles. Uh, as you can see right here, it shows us our full route. With a and this, you could copy this exactly to um, to your flight plan. Only thing, actually, no, you can't. There's a couple of things you need to amend, you need to fix. Uh, as I'm looking at this again, we see our airways, and again, you can leave those in there, and you know, uh, infinite flight will comp you know automatically get rid of them. It just won't recognize them. It'll only place you know the actual waypoints that it knows about. Now, one thing that is a, is a problem is this DCT. Now, I honestly, I have not tested this out yet. You can test it yourself. Um, DCT actually means direct, all right? Um, I don't know that there's actually a waypoint that goes by DCT because that kind of will mess things up. But usually when you see DCT, Delta Charlie Tango, that means direct. So that means from Houston directly to this waypoint. That means from uh, Sly directly to KLAX, all right? So you probably do not want to include DCT in your flight plan or it may, um, I don't know. I don't, I haven't tried it. You can try it yourself, but I don't think that'll work, all right? And then below that, we have our METAR data, again, which is always very helpful to have. Um, and so it's good if, you, if you're creating your flight plan, you plan on flying the flight within the next hour, uh, you have some pretty updated uh, METAR information. So you can see right here, our winds are at 130 at 8 knots. And then uh, we have uh, pretty good visibility and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go into what all that means right now. This is not a tutorial for that. Below that, we have very, uh, some more very helpful information. Uh, we have our fuel quantity for the Boeing 737-800. So it gives you fuel quantity specifically for the aircraft you are flying. All right. Um, and again, Infinite Flight, we're very new to having to deal with fuel. A lot of people are doing a lot of big long-haul flights, and fuel is very, very important. So it gives you a, a really good breakdown of your fuel. And like I said, in the beginning, I chose pounds. So now we're seeing it in pounds. So let's go ahead and break this down really quickly. So fuel usage. Uh, our, fly, our 
flight is expected to use about three hours and 18 minutes if we chose this route on fuel, which is about 18,000, almost 19,000 pounds. Now, reserve fuel, you want about an hour and 15 minutes more. So total is about four hours and 33 minutes of fuel you need to uh, you need on board of that plane, which is going to be uh, 26,041 pounds. All right, so that's pretty easy. I mean, that's like one of the easiest breakdowns you can see. Um, a few other uh, flight planner websites, they do the same thing, but they just don't make it as easy for, uh, uh, you know, as basic for you to read. So now, again, you can kind of see another layout of your flight plan. I don't know if you can actually click on, click on it. Yeah, you actually can click on a few things in here. And if you want to get a better look at your route, you can, um, you know, hit plus and minus, get a, you know, a close look as we fly through El Paso, things like that. So very, very helpful. You can also go to files, and what it'll do is it'll get you a PDF. Click on that PDF right here, and it'll actually download. If I click on that PDF, we now see the exact same information in a kind of a different format. Right here, it does the same thing, direct, gives you how many nautical miles and stuff like that. So it depends on how you want to look at it. If you want to print it out and have it with you, um, you can do it like that also. And uh, the PLN, I honestly don't know what that is. Um, and guys, I'm gonna be if I don't know what something is, I'm gonna be honest with you, and I'm gonna tell you I don't know what it is. I don't want to give you false information. So, anyways, that is the fourth way that um, I have uh, been using uh, to create my own flight plans. The fifth way that I create my flight plans is using Simbrief. S I M B R I E F dot com. That link will also be in the description below. It's very simple, but you need to have an account. Just go ahead and create an account with Simbrief. It's free. It's easy. Uh, confirm your account. Do what you got to do. And now I'm going to assume that you've done that, that you've created an account, and you're back here on the homepage. So come back to the, here on the homepage. Come back here with me. Come on. All right, we're back. We're back on the homepage. Now go to home. No, I'm sorry. Go to the menu and go to dispatch. And then dispatch system. That's where we're going to spend all of our time today. Hit that dispatch system. And then scroll down. We're going to make this very basic. This um, Simbrief goes into a lot, a lot of details. For, for flights. So we're going to basically just do the basics. <laughs> we're going to basically do the basics. So create a new flight right there. We're going to scroll down to dispatch options. Hopefully I'm not going too fast for you guys. I'm trying to do my best not to make this video too long because I feel like we're all, we've already gone pretty long on it. Uh, as you can see under flight info right here we have airline, we have flight number which you do not have to put. Basically really the only required fields on this first box is departure and arrival. I'm going to put my own airline, uh, my virtual airline which is Blue Arrow Global. Uh, Bravo Lima uniform and then I'm going to put my flight number as 116 because that's just what I always go by why not and we're going to keep going with the same route we've been doing just keep using that as an, using that as an example it's KIAH that's Houston Texas to Los Angeles and there it is as you can see it generates and it fills out the rest of, of the form for you which is pretty cool uh, it gives us an alternate of uh, Ontario you can also change that to none or auto uh, you can just leave it there on um, you know alternate is basically if for whatever reason you cannot land at LAX uh, They will send you to Ontario Also, you can set your date if you would like to put that date in the future You could do that, but you know, it doesn't really matter like this stuff at the top You don't really need to do except for departure and arrival and you could also set your departure time You know Zulu all that stuff which you can get from sky vector Remember you can get your Zulu time from sky vector if you don't you know know how to calculate it and things like that And then we got our airframe which is our aircraft Go ahead and click that drop down and you're going to see basically any aircraft you can think of. Like almost every aircraft is in here, even the general aviation aircraft. And we got King Air in here and stuff like that too. So uh, today we're using the Boeing 737-800, which is going to be a B-738. Go ahead and click on that. It's going to generate. Um, that's going to, so what it's actually going to do is in the background, it's kind of doing some other stuff for you later on. Based on the aircraft you're flying, it's going to kind of, uh, you know, make your flight plan based on that aircraft. Now, as we go down, we see our timing route is about three hours and 50 minutes, which is a little bit different than what the other websites was giving us, but it's around the same amount. Uh, we also have our departure and arrival runway. Now, this is my favorite feature about SimBrief. It'll give you the, uh, the correct runway based on the current winds at your departure location and arrival location, which is amazing. So that based on the Houston winds right now, we will be taking off out of 1-5 left, and based on Los Angeles winds, We'd be uh, landing and two five right. Um, also, and to the right to that, we have our taxi out and taxi in time. Uh, this is actually just means twenty minutes is our taxi out time, which you could actually change if you uh, if you're planning on having a shorter taxi, you can change that, and then you can change that for taxi in. Now, when changing this, what this, what this is going to do is this is going to actually help Simbrief calculate your fuel more correctly because you have to remember you are burning fuel when you're taxiing out and taxiing in, so you have to plan for that. You don't run out of fuel in the taxiway. Um, also, you could put in extra fuel if you like to have more. Altitude, leave that to auto, and it'll actually generate a uh, altitude for you. Passengers, auto, cargo, 
don't need to worry about any of the rest of this stuff. It's going to automatically put your name right there under captain and the pilot ID that Simbrief gives you. Now, next one we want to look at. Um, actually, we, we're going to skip this section right here, the selections part. Like I said, I'm going to do a basic, basic overview of Simbrief and how to use this for infinite flight. Uh, you don't really need all of this, but you can. If you want to uh, go to a higher level of realism, you can't really play with this, but I'm not going to go into it today. All right. Next, let's go down here to Route Finder. Click on Open Route Generator on the right side. And as you can see, it kind of gives us an estimated uh, cruise altitude. Um, that may change when, once you generate the actual flight plan at the end, but um, that's kind of the estimated. Also, it gives you an estimated time, I mean, sorry, estimated TAS, which is true airspeed. It's going to be 452 knots. Um, other than that, we don't need to really worry about the rest of this stuff. Again, this is very basic. Um, it gives you that. Scroll down. We can close that uh, to route. All right, now we're in the route section. Uh, and on the right side, let's look at the right side first where it says suggested routes, click to use. So as we click through these, as we click through these, uh, they will change on there. So this is a few different routes that you can take with a few different departures and things like that. So it's up to you really which one you want to use. And again, we see that same departure here again, that BNDTO5 and that arrival. And we still have some airways and stuff, which Infinite Flight is not going to recognize. Uh, it'll just skip right over it. Um, so... Basically, what you need to do from here, if you scroll down here, you see a big map of the whole world. Uh, if What you do is you hit Analyze Route, and that's going to put the route on the map for you, so you can see all the waypoints. Now, I had an issue doing this earlier. I had a, I did a test for this video. For some reason, when I hit Analyze Route, it gives me a big red thing. So what it does is it's not liking the arrival and that last waypoint. So I'm going to delete that. We hit Analyze Route again, and so now it's good. So if you have any issues with the route that it analyzed, this is actually the first time this has ever happened to me. So if you ever have an issue like that, you can just go in and delete whatever it's telling you to delete, delete and reanalyze a route right there. And we scroll down, now we see our waypoints and our route is showing just as it should as you're flying from Houston to Los Angeles. You can also change it to satellite view here if you'd like. You can also change uh, the air, you know, airways to show airways, different layers and stuff like that, which you're not going to go into again, uh, but you can mess around with that if you'd like to see some more things. You can also turn on the winds uh, if you want to see what the winds are on your way out there. So... Basically, that's the that's the easy part with SimBrief. You can copy this into your uh, into your you know wherever you need to put your flight plan in Infinite Flight or whatever. Um, like again, like I said, you don't want the airways and you don't want the departure. Um, but one more thing I'm going to show you about SimBrief before we get out of here is scroll back up to the top. All right, and then right here under this gray box of Dispatch Options, there's Generate OFP, New Flight, Safe Flight, Close Flight. Now those are pretty obvious what those mean. Uh, but what we're going to look at right now is Generate OFP right here. We're going to click on that. And we'll see what that does. That's actually going to generate a, a briefing package for you. Uh, it's going to show us the same information we just looked at in a highly detailed way. And I'm only going to go through a little bit of it. But um, again, because this is a basic tutorial and I'll save the advanced stuff for later. I just want to get you in the air. So if you look down here, we can see we have a whole flight plan summary, our flight number, the aircraft we chose origin, destination, alternate, cruise, actually gives us a cruise altitude now of flight level 380. So that changes a little bit from what we saw earlier. Um, one thing that's really cool is it gives you your block fuel. Block fuel is just basically how much fuel you need in total from uh, point A to point B, all right? Uh, you can, it also puts extra fuel, which we didn't choose to put extra fuel, so we didn't put any extra fuel for us. It gives us our air time, departure time, our date. Um, if you added that in there, it gives us our route again here. Again, you can copy this to Infinite Flight. I'm gonna be showing you that in just a few seconds here. Scroll down, you click on this map, same thing we saw earlier. It gives all our points on the map for us to see. And then down here is where it really gets interesting. For you people who really like to be realistic in Infinite Flight, this is where you're going to fall in love right here. You look at this sheet, it shows us all the same information we see, but in a whole lot more details. I mean, it gives us, uh, this is right here, our plan, fuel, uh, to, you know, at, at, to the alternate, it gives you how, much fuel you need, how much fuel you need to get to the alternate. Uh, I mean, it gives you your minimums, extra fuel, uh, all kind of stuff. There's just so much stuff in here. Like I said, I'm not going to go in it. We, we could spend a whole video just talking about this stuff. It also even gives you your um, altitudes, uh, your climbing rates. Uh, it gives you the, the um, waypoints. And, you know, it, just, it gives you everything, routes, everything. Everything is here. And again, I'm not going to go through it. So let's get back to Infinite Flight. And so I can show you how to put in this route or any route for, uh, for that matter into Infinite Flight and what that looks like. All right, so let's head over to Infinite Flight.